want one more goal, no? Yeah, you can just drive like two strong, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys go right there? Okay. Yeah. the coordinates for what the Puma said and then I wrote down what you guys full three yards operating right now but they're giving me separate notes. Thank you sir I appreciate it. Oh yeah there's a small one coming up. That's a small one. The cutter is long gone. Uh, LEX is an exercise to get us ready for upcoming uh, the recon, force counter recon. So we do a couple iterations of these. This is the first large uh, scale one we're doing. So we move out from Camp Lejeune. We employ radar systems, sensing abilities, uh, UAS. We tie it in to close the kill chain. Uh, so LEX one, it, we've done a lot of field ops in the past, the last couple of weeks getting ready for this. This is the first one that we're like actually out executing the mission. So. We've set up the, the radar systems, uh, the sensing abilities before. We've done the ranges. We've done uh, the cami painting up, getting in the hide, building, building ghillies, driving around the UTVs. We've done all that separately. This is the first time we're taking all the puzzle pieces, putting it all together. So this is what um, the Marine Corps wants to do by 2030. This is the first iteration of this uh, for the uh, recon, counter recon. So by doing this first Lex, we're finding out the abilities, the capabilities that we have and the deficiencies that we have, not only in the Marines and our training, but in the gear. So as we move forward, going to Lex 2, Lex 3, Lex 4, it's gonna become more refined and we're writing the playbook for this stuff. So you're taking guys from everywhere. So you're taking uh, O3s, uh, you know, LAV crew members, you're taking uh, normal riflemen, and then you're taking radio operators, you're putting them all in a platoon together. So like for the O3s especially, like a lot of them, they're starting to get hands on with the comm gear. They're learning about the sensing capabilities that we have. Um, they're all going on courses, getting up on the UAS, uh, and then for me and Corporal Baker, who's the other 21, uh, as radio operators, we've, you know, we are attached to the grunts, but we're getting to do all the hands-on training. So this is one of the first times that genuinely everyone in this platoon has to know everyone's job. So by doing this Lex, we're all seeing how that plays out. If, you know, Baker and I are taken away, someone else has to step up, and if one of the US, UAS operators can't do their job, um, you know, then we're not going to be in the fight the same way. Uh, the Commandant's 2030 plan that we're implementing is the standard forces. So in any littoral area, if the, we go to war full on with a peer-to-peer -peer nation, we need to be able to pull out any fleet in that area and then leave stand-in forces. So um, the fleet can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the anti-air capabilities and the anti-fleet uh, capabilities that other nations have. So they pull out, leave us on an island somewhere, uh, as the adversary nation flows through, let all their ships pass, but collect on them as they go by, 
And then once they're completely through, we're collecting on any cargo ships, supply chain ships, so that we could feed that back to the fleet that we're in support of, and then they could fly in, execute, and destroy that target. So it's not to directly combat the enemy, but it's to chop their legs out from under them. So the training that we're doing right now directly ties into the 2030 plan. Like I said, this is the first time this has ever been executed. This is the first time that um, a recon counter recon like this has been conducted. So by doing this training, we're again writing that we're writing the playbook for this. This has never been done. So as the years go by and more and more of these uh, style deployments are being executed, we'll be able to take the info and all the things we learned from this and pass it on to the Marines following us so they can execute it to the best of their ability. This training is making us more lethal by raising our capabilities in a plethora of skills. So from UAS, uh, sensing, radar, passing all this back into the higher or to the greater SIPR architecture so that you know anyone in the world can hop on our SIPR network you know as long as they have the correct classification and they're allowed to be on it and they can see what we're sensing on they can see all the data we're collecting and then closing the kill chain for not only the Marine Corps but for the Navy side showing them that they can send four five six Marines in a single UTV with sensing capabilities and UAS and they can get all the eyes on the target you need uh, so like Lex 1 and the follow-on Lexes that we're planning all start here and like started you know yesterday when we got here and it's making sure that everyone is capable on all these systems, taking 27 Marines and being able to execute a mission, close a kill chain instead of sending hundreds of Marines. So this is directly tying into like Force Plan 2030, what the Commandant wants us to be able to do. And it's the future of how we as a branch survive and make ourselves relevant. Uh, all of this benefits the individual Marine by you taking a single Marine and instead of them putting them in a billet as a rifleman or as the radio operator attached, you're making sure every Marine in that platoon knows everyone's job. You're making every Marine have to not be specialized, but be a jack of all trades. Um, and people say jack of all trades, but ace of none. But when you take a unit of this size, the amount of training that we're getting and the amount of courses that everyone's going through at the time is far exceeding what any other unit is able to do right now because it's such a small unit. So the individual Marine is coming out of this better trained, better equipped to handle anything they do in the future, whether they go back to a more conventional unit or they continue on with doing uh, recon, counter recon.